hands off if you're going to ride this beast today. Let's do it. It's a bit fancy for a Harley, isn't it? So here we are, ladies and gents, on a Harley Davidson 883 Iron. Now the actual story was I was supposed to be testing out a Street 750. Well, the Street 750 is the brand new model from Harley, 750cc, 43 put found, put found, 43 foot pounds of torque, 60 degree V twin, and it's all completely new. It's a completely redesigned bike from the ground up. But got to the shop, didn't have any. They'd sent theirs to Lubeck, which is a city just up the road. God only knows why they'd send it away when they've booked some test rides, but meh. I sat on one in the shop and to be honest it was just too small for me so then I sweet talked the chap into let me have a go on this bad boy the 883 which in super lazy fashion which as I get older and older I seem to like more and more actually has less horsepower and more torque than the 750 I think this is pushing out 53 horsepower which is 11 down on my Versus. As I remember, the, the torque was about 55 foot-pounds of torque. And I've got to be honest, it, it does pull. I'm going to go too crazy. The girl in that car behind me is a policewoman. <laughs> and unlike any other bike I've ever ridden, check this out. It's got an analog speedo and a digital taco. I've got to be honest, I think I'd prefer that. As I said in my MT-07 review, you know where you are with a needle. We just don't have to don't have to push the engine to get any life out of it. And the belt drive is really direct, really sharp. There's no slap, no slop at all. Those look suspiciously like massive rain clouds. I don't fancy that. But anyway, here we are lazily pottering along at two and a half thousand RPM. And it still pulls. I mean not super fast, but my versus would be sputtering and coughing at that level. So, bells and whistles, what have we got? It's got trip counter as you would imagine clock gear indicator along with the rpm here the thing that most impressed me though is the fact that the keyhole is down there with no key in it because it's got keyless start when the key's in your pocket just rock up start the bike and it's got an alarm as well which uses the same same chip to switch it on and off so that's quite cool to be honest i like the feel of everything it's very uh i'll be honest it's very unexpected it's all very clunky and I mean, I know Harleys have a, a reputation for being agricultural, but I think that's a good thing. I like a good solid feel. Oh, I don't like a good dirty road when I've got a two and a half thousand euro excess on the insurance. Oh, that's horrible. But yeah, everything feels really solid and clunky. The gear change is direct. It's not snickety by any stretch of the imagination, but it's, you get a good solid feel. You know that you're in gear. Now, these wing mirrors, a complete shit. That's ridiculous. I can't see anything behind me, just my own elbow. Now we're actually off to Ikea over there. I'm going to go and see if the luggage is spacious enough to fit a new chest of drawers in. Of course, that's not true. That would be ridiculous. Now, the 883 is, of course, a 45-degree V-twin. As far as I know, it's 883 cubic centimetres. That's why the tank is so high up, because the, the engine is very tall. There's only 45 degrees between the pistons. The Street 750 was actually... Uh, the brakes are pretty solid, actually. I'd read very bad things about the brakes on the 750. But as I was saying, the 750 is a 60-degree twin, which means there's a bit more space between them, and the pistons are more flat, which makes everything more squashed down, which gives more suspension travel, a lower tank height, blah, 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 blah. All very exciting because I'm not even on that bike. I must be honest, I had expected a bit more noise from this beast. It's very, it's very pedestrian, to be honest. There's a lot more valve noise than there is pipe noise. surprised by the comfort so far. The seat is surprisingly cradling of my nether regions and delicate areas. Has to be done really, doesn't it? But admit though, when you get up to speed it's a little bit tiresome because you're getting all of that wind. I'm not used to it. I mean obviously if you're a cruiser rider or a naked bike rider then this is not going to be news to you but I'm not used to this wind and I'm forcing against it because of the position the lazy position of the ride of this bike it's uh, it's a little bit tiresome it's something you can get used to it's 
I mean, you could do some kind of Pilates or planking to try and improve your core strength and stability, which is something that I know all Harley Davidson riders are well known for. Feels very lazy. I have to say, I could get used to that lazy feeling. It's a real shame that I only get one hour with this bike. It'd be quite cool to actually just pop out for the day, go for a proper ride. Filtering on a Harley. There we go. Can do it. Oh, he didn't get my foot off the pegs then. The riding position is so very different to what I'm used to. Feet are way forwards, a lot higher. My ass is practically on the back tire. The torque is proper nice though, proper nice to get me blood. I do very much enjoy the fact that you can change the display with the button on the on the controls here with my left thumb look. There we go. Trip A, trip B, clock, gear indicator and rev counter. That's nice. Horn as with all bikes is pathetic. See? A manly bike like this. Something Wolverine would ride and then you stick a horn like that on it. Shut your face. The indicators on this bike are press once to activate, thus press once again to switch off. I mean, the feedback on those could be a bit better. They're a little bit soft. Although the confusing thing is, just like on BMWs, to indicate right, the button is on the right. There. You get the telltale on the dash there. And then press again to, dis to disindicate. That's not even a word. Press again to cancel it. But apparently if you leave it running, it um, cancels itself after a minute or two. But that could just be my dodgy German, I don't know. He could have said, if you leave it running, the bike will explode after two minutes, I don't know. I get lost sometimes, I was just excited that I was going to get on the bike, wasn't I? <laughs> so there we go, now that I've got nobody to upset, I'm going to leave that running and see if it switches itself off. So it does jump around on tick over, so the front wheel bobbling about. So although it's really quite smooth when you're on the run, it jumps around like an ADHD kid on a trampoline when you're at tick over. It reminds you that it's an air-cooled engine as well every time you stop and those cooling fins burn all of the dust and the pigeon shit and stuff off of them. You get a lovely smell of burning biological matter. Yeah, well it didn't cancel and I don't want to ride along with my indicator on so uh, you'll just have to look into that yourself I guess. I don't really know where to put my foot on the back here. I've dressed for the part today wearing my Kevlar jeans and lace-up boots which means I've got heels which I've hooked over the pedal here but I'm really hooking my foot up high to get it onto the brake pedal. I don't know if that's normal. Should I put my heel on the pedal perhaps? That just feels unnatural though. I feel wonky. Whereas if, I'm, if I put the hook of the heel on the pedal there, it feels like I'm going to touch my um, heel on the exhaust pipe which is just going to end up with burnt rubber and scratch paintwork. Oh no you don't. No red lights today, I'm on a bloody Harley, innit? Running reds on my steel horse, people! So maybe that pedal's adjustable, I don't know. But the way it is, it's a bit uncomfortable for me. You know what? It's not unnimble. Flickable it is not, but it's no slouch. I mean, you can, you can chuck it a little bit. I mean, it's no sports bike. Let's not go crazy. I mean, there's a real resistance. You have to, if you get on the counter steer, you can chuck it around a bit more. I think it's a lot narrower than my bike as well. Oh, look at this. Huh. This is quite impressive, actually. 63 kilometers. That is how much this bike has done. That's how new it is. I think I'm gonna have to take back a few of my seat comments. The seat is very uh, cupping, shall we say. And the, uh, the forward lip of the cup is putting a little bit too much pressure on my perineal region. I think more of a flat seat would be uh, the order of the day for me. I just really wish I had the time to get out and try and find some swoopy roads, like some a bit of highway riding, not European highway, I don't mean motorway, but you know, a little bit of American sweepy highway style stuff. Just just kind of try this bike in the, the setting it's designed for. I mean, right now I'm in the city. They're not meant for this, are they? That'll be neutral, well done. Although the, the idea with the Street 750 was that that was a city Harley designed to create a bike that people who want to get into riding Harleys can have one that works in the city. But to be fair, so far, this hasn't been that bad. I mean, I can feel the warmth coming off of the engine. That's not ideal, is it? I imagine it would absolutely cook if I was in traffic for too long. Oh, I can feel the heat coming off of that. I do like the black, though. A lot of matte black going on there. I'm a big fan. Nice special ops utilitarian look to it. It really keeps messing me up that the indicator to go right is on the right. I keep on 
going for the left, but there's no right indicator on the left. Simple. Now this guy on the scooter is hustling. Well, thank you very much. Cheers. It's the Elster again, ladies and gents. The jewel in Hamburg's crown, I'll wager. Right, which way am I going here? I kind of want to go up that way, but I've cocked up here. It certainly gets the looks, doesn't it? Oh, it really does jump around when you sat still. There's neutral again. Is that the third time I've done that? So with a little bit of counter steering, you can chuck it around a little bit. Thus, and the brakes do pull up quite sharp, considering the size of the bike. Quite impressed with that. Right, sadly, I have to start heading back. Top speed so far has been 50 to 60. Had a little bit of city stuff. Tried flicking it around a bit in the city. It's very, very firm on the suspension, I have to say. The back wheel is very rigidly attached to the floor, shall we say. It's not uncomfortable, but I'm feeling the smaller bumps. But that's not entirely surprising, is it? Let's be honest. Ow. Oh, it's heavy on the uh, old manoeuvrage. Oh, turning circle's not great. I'm trying to get through there. Oh, shunt, shunt, shunt. That was not elegant. Oh, that was hard work. It's a lot heavier than I expected, manoeuvring it manually. There's neutral again. And on the lower speed stuff, there is some serious warmth coming off of this block. I can imagine that would be fantastic in the winter. And it's quite nice today because it's not exactly warm. But in the summer, I can imagine that's a bit of a killer. It's quite well balanced. I haven't put my feet down yet. I'm quite impressed with that. Maybe the extra weight of it helps with that. I mean, there's a lot of engine down the bottom there. Still keep cocking up with that indicator. That's ridiculous. I'm noticing as well, I don't know how much you're going to get this, but look how much lower I am way lower seat height than on a bike like that. There's a little bit of flickability in there when you really need it. You've got to crank on those bars to make it do it, but it's there. Hmm, dead end. This isn't going to work. Oh, it is heavy to move it around. It's U-turnable though. Oh, I can't forget how heavy it is. Just lean me over there and then drop the bloody thing. See if we can try and get a quick walk around just before I give it back. To be honest, look at the... Can you see the pattern of the headlight there? That's a bit of a joke, isn't it? There's loads of scatter above the, the line of the, the cast, or whatever you want to call it. It's one thing that always amazes me, that vehicle manufacturers kind of have no excuse anymore for designing a bad headlight reflector. And the fact that the Yamaha Phaser's headlight was so bad, even though that they had the exact same headlight bulbs as in my Versus, the headlights were so terrible because the reflector was such a terrible design. There you go, can you see that? There's all sorts of scattery bits and weird reflections there. Maybe when it's cast off 50 meters in, into the future, maybe it's a different story, but that looks pretty shit to me. Oh, it would take me forever to get used to these indicators. Keep on getting the thumb out to indicate right. I've got to be honest, the fact that I'm sitting on a Harley does make me want to be a little bit more of a hooligan than I normally am. Which is odd, isn't it? Wouldn't you expect that I mean, maybe a supermoto or a sports bike would make me want to be a hooligan? Yeah, I kind of want to be a bit more leery on this bad boy just because, I don't know, I guess they come with a bad boy image, don't they? Bow, now, 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 now. See, one thing I don't think I did mention, I have to say that the all of these switches, these buttons, the switch gear that they're mounted to, this brake reservoir particularly, they're really, really top quality. They feel good, they look good. Whereas on the quick little glance I had while I sat on the Street 750, I have to say they all felt a bit plasticky and a bit crap. Almost like something that you'd see on a, a Chinese copy of a Harley. Whereas these are all, they're, they're solid, I like, I like them very much. They're all kind of this textured cast metal. And these are very nicely painted or anodized. I don't know, I think they're metal as well, but they're a nice satin black. All of that works for me. I like good quality components. I'm a big fan of that power delivery. That's just nice and strong. It's not so aggressive you're gonna get yourself in any trouble, but it's good and solid. 
and there's no fuss as well. The engine isn't screaming at me, the vibrations aren't going crazy. The bike just rolls up its sleeves, gets on and does it. Could do with a lot more noise though. It's almost always the same, isn't it, when you buy a bike? Pipe's the first thing that has to go. So there it is, Harley Davidson 883 Iron. I've got to be honest, I quite like the way it looks. I'm a big fan of all of this matte black. I prefer the understated look rather than dripping in chrome. I prefer this kind of taller look as well, a bit more athletic rather than the great big super chopper mega heavy electroglide style Harleys. Everything seems quite quite good quality. I'm not quite sure why they've gone for everything matte here and then super shiny black here. I don't really like that. This would be better if it was satin or matte again. The front wheel is massive, isn't it? Nice little silver touches poking out there as well. Single disc on the front. I'm surprised by how much stopping it actually has considering it has a single disc. Although it is quite a big disc. I can hear that engine clicking as it cools down. I haven't had an air-cooled engine for a long time. She's a right looking beast, I think. I'm pleasantly surprised by the whole thing. No back seat, improves the looks no end if you ask me. I actually quite like it. If I had a shit ton of spare cash and I wanted something else just to, you know, just to, to mix things up every other weekend, then yeah, maybe I'd consider something like this. I mean, nobody's ever looked at me on the Versus like that guy on the scooter did earlier on. I think he was in love. Here's the key fob thing that I was saying about. I mean, the key, which is tiny, looks like a padlock key, doesn't it? But you can use the key to lock the steering, thus, to try and stop any thieving bastard from having a way with your bike. Although, being able to take the key away, <laughs> <laughs> but start the bike. Can you start the bike with the steering locked? That'd be a bit silly, wouldn't it? You can. You can start the bike with the steering locked. If you ask me, that's pretty retarded. If I ride off on that now, I'm going to shit my pants just about the same time as I plow into the front of that beetle. Not clever, Messrs. Harley and Davidson. So anyway, right. So yeah, with this in my pocket, and then she starts up. We're going to give it back. Steering lock is off. Let's just make sure. Well, there was one thing that surprised me. Look at this. There's no lock on the fuel cap. You just take it off. Somebody could rob all of my fuel or pee in my petrol tank or any number of terrible things. I prefer a lock on that in this day and age. I really would. But anyway, let's get out of here. See if I can stack it doing a U-turn on this loose ground here. I don't think there's anything else really to say. I'm quite quite impressed really. I will apologise for the fact that there's only the one view in this video. I was hoping to get some extra perspective here but sadly one of my Sony cameras is back at the shop because it's broken. Just as I'm getting the hang of these indicators I've got to give the bike back. Typical. So that's it then. Test ride done. My first ever ride on a Harley and to be honest I'm pleasantly surprised. It's lazy, it's relaxed, it's quite thumpy, all things that I like. Quite comfortable. I was expecting to be a little bit more fatigued by the, the different ride Riding position but again I'm enjoying the laziness and the comfort of it the engine I think is great the horsepower is way down but to be honest I really didn't notice I don't care I'm all about that lazy low end nowadays it's probably about time I got myself a litre bike all well, the components seem pretty good very surprised and impressed by the the keyless start brakes are surprisingly good I wasn't expecting the brakes to be as as effective as they as they are I mean they're not sharp they're not aggressive but they're effective, the bike stops, and considering it's only got one disc on the front, I'm quite impressed by the way they work. And the bike is a lot more manoeuvrable and a lot more fun than I expected it would, would be. So you have to really stab at those buttons a little bit, actually. In the 11th hour, there's a gripe. Anyway, so here we are, Harley Davidson ride, done. Quite enjoyed that, but I'm actually quietly glad that they didn't have the 750, because I think this is a much better looking bike. It's a lot more serious. Well, thanks for watching. Till next time, ride safe, ride a Harley.